testing one, two, three. What's going on guys? This is going to be the first installment of what I'm calling flogs, fabrication logs, where I'm gonna take you through each of the tasks that I need to do on the projects that I'm working on and show you everything in a raw state. So today we're gonna to be making these little hex features out of one inch flat bar pieces that are a quarter inch thick that I'm gonna cut up to the correct angles on the ends to make a hex shape just like this. Now what I'm using this for is a swing out stool on the side of my welding table and it is gonna have uh, one pretty large cross member here that's gonna be made out of I think one and a half by two inch tubing. I'm gonna have a flat bar on this side and then I'm gonna have this hex pattern made out of these guys all the way out and then I'm going to have an Acme thread with a large nut here and my seat that will adjust up and down. Anyway, I need to make a lot of these and these are actually taking a lot of time to make. So I'm gonna take you through that. We're also going to do a bit of assembly on the vise, which if you haven't gone and watched my videos on that build, I will put a link right here for you to do that. I just painted it, so some of the edges are still a little wet, but that paint job looks good. I've already got the grip plates on, but I don't have the drive thread. Those are the two things, assemble the vise and start putting these little pieces together. So I'm gonna take you along, let's go. All right, so here are our pieces. We should have six of them, three and three. We're good to go. So each of these edges needs to have a 30 degree uh, to make a point on this side. And the total length needs to be 1.87. So I have some calipers. I'm gonna measure those out and do a little bit of grinding. But first, safety guys, gotta put the respirator on. Now in order to do a perfect 30 degree on each of these little pieces uh, that I need to do, I have this magnetic square uh, that has the different angles on it. So this face, excuse me, this face and this face together equal 30 degrees as you can see right there. So what I do is I put that uh, flat bar, piece of flat bar there, and then I slide this bottom edge along my um, stand over here. Just want to show you. I slide this bottom face along right here and just go back and forth and what that does is put a 30 degree angle on either side of this and then I keep doing that and checking it with the calipers until I get that that correct distance as well as correct angles on either side it's a lot of work to get this shape so I probably won't do a project like this again but I started it and I kind of want to finish it out so So I went ahead and sketched this up on a computer and you can see the general outline of the shape that I'm trying to hold for my pattern. Uh, you can see it's got six sides uh, at two inches, which I've, I've trimmed these down to 1.89 inches. Uh, so they fit on my pattern. Uh, they're each a quarter inch thick. The angle between them is 120 degrees. So what that results in is a needed 30 degrees. You can kind of see it on this single uh, form that I, I printed off 
30 degrees on each corner, creating a, a knife edge at the center of each of those. That allows me to tack them together with a nice tight fit on the inside here. Uh, and then it leaves open a 120 degree opening on the outside that I can grab another piece. Let me go grab one that I'm going to be able to pull in and get a nice tight fit right here, just like that to create my pattern. So to connect them, it's going to essentially look something like, and then it'll be another one on top. I'm going to have to trim this one down to fit just right. And then put those 30 degrees on this, but that's essentially what it's going to look like to make that pattern for this swing out stool. All right, so we're getting that 30 degree on each corner. <clears throat> let's check where, let's check the length on this. 1.89 inches, which is spot on. Oh yeah, let's try where we want it. Two down, four more to go. Gotta just keep chugging away. You know, sometimes I, I find this type of work where it's just the same task kind of over and over, but you can chip away at it and see the progress. Extremely satisfying. I don't know what it is. All right, let's whittle this one down. Okay, so we have all six of our little bars uh, prepped up. I cut this pattern out of some wood uh, to be consistent with my pattern. So I use this in each of these, it's a pretty tight fit, um, to hold everything together. So I just get clamps and I clamp these together and then I tack them up on the edges. I'm on the struggle bus right now. Anyways, let's grab some clamps and clamp them up. Clamp them up, clamp them up. That clamp didn't fit. Uh oh. Alright. So we gotta use this bigger clamp. Well, that was just about an epic fail. All right, there you go. Now I'll go ahead and tack it at each of the corners on both sides, on the back side too. Uh, and then we'll get this thing ground up and we'll have a third one. And hopefully we'll just keep continuing it along to make up this whole pattern here. Uh, it's a lot of work to make it look like this. I wouldn't do it again, but that's how it goes. All right, so here is the vise that I just built and uh, finished the paint job on. I just put these jaws in here, so I'm not gonna go back and, and re-put those on. We'll tighten those up, uh, and then we'll also take this front plate off. Uh, we'll grease up the uh, threads on the drive thread, as well as the, the main drive nut, and then we'll put the thrust bearings, the, the nut that holds the inside spring on to take out all the slop, and then bolt this all up together. And then we can bolt this to the table, and it should be usable at that point, ready to rock and roll. Let's get to it. All right, so to take this off, we are using a 3 16 Allen. Let's actually just slide that in. It'll help hold it. 
not scratch up the paint. So I did quarter 20 bolts on all four corners of this front plate. Uh, it's really only needed for when you're uh, opening the jaw. So if you try to hold something behind each of these, uh, the force will get transmitted through those bolts or cap screws. But uh, during the actual gripping or pinching action that the vise is mainly used for, all the load's gonna go through the plate into the, the square tubing or the uh, sidewall half inch plates. So I'm not worried about this setup. It allows for an easy, uh, easy access to the thrust bearings that I put on the inside of the vise itself. All right, so now that we have that off, let's, let's take the dynamic jaw out and put it to the, to the side here. Put it upside down so it doesn't scratch the paint. So you can see the inside jaw here. Uh, we are going to take some grease. I just went to Walmart and got some Supertech multi-duty multi complex uh, grease. I tried putting some WD-40. It really didn't seem to work. You want a, a very low viscosity. So we're gonna stick our finger in here and really get as much into those threads as we can get and try not to make a royal mess, which seems to be what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and, and line the, the top and bottom where the dynamic draw slides about. Really make for a smooth surface in there. I'll also grease this up once we have the thrust bearing in the nut and everything on, installed on this end. Then I'll go ahead and put the grease on the drive thread. Throw these gloves away. All right, let me throw a few more black gloves on. The first thing that goes on to the, the drive thread, which is gonna be on the outside of this front plate, it's gonna be a thrust bearing. And this is gonna be the main thrust bearing that holds the, the working load when you're clamping down on something. Now, directly following that is the front plate. So we're gonna put this on. Let's take these cap screws out. And you can see with that thrust bearing that we get a nice smooth action uh, that's going to allow for the load to transmit more efficiently. You're going to be able to get a lot higher load using that thrust bearing on the outside. Now, the next thing is this inside thrust bearing. And the only reason that I'm using that on the inside is to get smooth action coming out away when you're opening up the jaws. You, you can get a little bit of a, a sticky point if it's super bogged down or super tight. And so I just wanted to add this thrust bearing for that smooth action or smooth operation. So then I have this spring that goes just on the backside of that inner thrust washer or thrust bearing, excuse me. And that's going to uh, get compressed down slightly, allow for a, a really tight fit and it takes out all the slop of the system. So when you go up and you hold the handle of this vise and give it a wiggle, it's gonna have very little slop to it because of that spring. Now to speed this along, because I designed this vise to be operated by a half inch drive, uh, I can actually use an impact or a drill to make this process super quick. So I can just pull that nut all the way down. Careful not to get hit by the, the spinning front plate. Again, you can see that front plate's very smooth, smooth acting. Trying to find the hole where our threads go through. All right, I actually think I have my bolt backwards. My nut backwards, not my bolt. All right, and then we use a cotter pin, which I thought I had right here. There it is. So I have to line the drilled out hole of my nut, line that up with the drilled out hole in the, looks like we need to go one more. There we go. Outstanding. So then, 
Forgot we were going to put some grease on the end of this. We will sacrifice another glove. Get this done. Make sure this thing slides real nice. All right, that should be enough to get us going. Let's get a new glove. It's kind of the point of using these black gloves. <clears throat> so again, this is super nice that I have this front plate uh, being able to remove because I can open this up again and again to get access to this if I need to change the thrust bearing or need, I need to adjust something a little bit differently. Uh, it's really easy to get that done. So we're going to take this dynamic jaw. Let's go ahead and wipe off our paint here. Got a little crazy with the grease. It's a shop, I know, but need it to look nice for the video. All right, so we move that back and forth. Nice and smooth. Now for the drive thread. Leave that front plate just a little bit loose so we can put these quarter 20 cap screws in the four corners. I really like the design of this vise uh, with this removable front plate. It really makes things quite convenient uh, to set everything up. Tighten those down. Man, I'm pretty happy about this vise. I'm excited for the projects I'm going to get to make on it. Tighten those down. Let's tighten our drive thread retorque our front plate bolts make sure they're not going to come out there we go <clears throat> always put your tools away all right see if i can operate it by hand oh yeah Let's, let's open it and close it a few times. Alright, right. let's put on. Operate it by hand a few times. Make sure everything's feeling good. Feeling good in the neighborhood. Alright. Man, it's so smooth. You just want to sit here and spin it all day long. Just throw the handle around. Now, I have these four holes in my welding table. Oh, here's a tip for anybody who's making holes in a welding table for their vise. I am right-handed. I went through and I tried to think through where I wanted this vise. And based off of my, my layout of the shop, I thought it would be most efficient to put it here on the left-hand side of this side of the table. Well... Uh, having worked with this for, I don't know, a couple of days before I painted it, I realized it really would be better because I'm right-handed to have the vise on the right-hand side of the table. It's kind of an oversight on my part. So anybody putting their vise on their table, make sure and think through if you're right or left-handed. If you're right-handed, I suggest putting it on the right-hand side. All right, so... Man, those bolts, those bolts just kind of dropped in there perfectly. That was nice. All righty. Got half inch bolts, four of them. Should, should be way more than is really needed for this application, but I definitely wanted to make sure this vise never broke at the base when I'm hammering whatever I'm hammering on. And I don't think I have to worry about that now, do I? All right, let's get you a little closer in on this. Let's open and close it a few times. It 
It does jump a little bit when you're opening it. I think that spring, it catches a little bit and that spring starts to push and then uh, the friction just gives way. And that's what that jumping is. Because this, this direction, there's no jumping. Um, it's pretty, pretty straight, pretty smooth operating this way. In reverse, that's where you get that little bit of a jumping action. You really see it there. Um, but it's, it's really not much slop. There's a little bit of slop there. But it's really a, a pretty good vice uh, for man, anything I need to do. All right, let's have some fun. Uh, let's go ahead and grab onto something. Let's say we need to clean up the edge. Let's clean up the edge of this little, little piece here with a file. Yeah, that's solid. Oh yeah, she works good. So I think I think she's assembled. Um, maybe later on we'll uh, make that spring a little bit tighter so it doesn't have that jumping action when you're opening it up. But she's she's holding stuff down exactly how I want her to, rigid to the table. Uh, I think we're good to go. Thanks for sticking with me. Uh, I do have this vice build on my channel, so go to my main channel and, and watch that uh, if you want to be. Uh, follow along with how I built this vice out and every step along the way. I have the table build on my channel as well, so go check that one out uh, so you can see how I did those two. I'm still in the process of finishing out my swing out stool. Uh, I'll be posting that here in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned to that. If you want to see more content like this and some of my other project builds, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and make sure to turn on notifications so you get notified when I come out with a new video. I hope you enjoyed this vlog, fabrication log. I plan to do much more. Not, not anything grand. We got to put our vise finally together after getting painted, which that was pretty cool. Uh, the stool is still in progress, so we didn't finish that out, but hey, you don't finish projects every single day. It takes time. So hope you guys liked it. Stay tuned for the next vlog. Peace.